In this video, we are going to discuss how to repair fallen arches, uh, arches that have fallen because of some kind of injury or uh, over time or because of uh, you, the way you were born. Uh, some people are born with a thing called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which makes their uh, connective tissue very, very uh, pliable and sometimes they can't hold up their own weight. They end up with their uh, feet being very, very flat. Uh, sometimes you uh, jump off of something and drop the uh, arch down. Uh, so there, we're going to discuss uh, all the ways to get the arch uh, repaired and functioning normally. Uh, the arch must function normally uh, in order for you to have a, a long, healthy life. Uh, there is a, uh, a pump in the bottom of your foot called the plantar venous pump that will not function correctly if the arch is not functioning correctly. Uh, so uh, this, this pump pumps the blood back up to your heart that goes down to your legs and feet. So you can imagine if that pump is not working properly, your heart has to work twice as hard to get blood pumped through your body, which over time uh, will make your heart weaker and uh, you less healthy and you won't live as long. So healthy arches increase your lifespan. So don't let anybody tell you that you cannot uh, fix the arches that are fallen. You definitely can. Uh, what we uh, normally start out with is uh, adjustments to the feet, uh, but uh, let me begin by uh, saying that uh, the whole leg mechanism is simply uh, one big stick balancing on top of two little sticks, your uh, tibia and fibula, uh, which is also balanced on top of a little pile of pebbles, which are all the bones in your ankle, okay? So the bones in the ankle are kept in place by a properly functioning arch, okay? So if the, the arch falls, then basically the thing that's holding these pebbles in place is falling, which makes the two sticks unstable, which makes the top stick unstable, and the place where they're joined together unstable. So you end up with knee problems right away, and then hip problems, lower back problems, and on and on because most of the time problems in your structure begin with your feet and uh, specifically the the arch. So uh, with that analogy, right, what we have to do is make sure that the the thing that's holding the uh, the pebbles in place is functioning right so that the tibia and fibula are in the right place at the bottom which means they'll be in the right place at the top for the femur to sit on, okay, for everything to function properly. So uh, there are three parts of the arch. Let me have your foot. Uh, three parts of the arch. One right here next to the heel, uh, which is uh, the uh, posterior tibialis is connected to this uh, muscle right here. And uh, there's the middle part of the arch, which uh, is this bone right here on your foot that uh, uh, clicks right here. And then the third part is right at the uh, big toe, where uh, the bottom of the big toe, where it connects at the ball of the foot. So any one of these three can be dropped uh, at any given time, and, and or all of them, okay? If all of them are dropped, then your foot would be completely flat and uh, everything starts drooping in this way, okay? Which means the knee starts drooping in and all kinds of problems happen, okay? So uh, if you go to a chiropractor or a bone setter, he's going to put you on a table and uh, he's going to adjust this first arch if it's out uh, very much like this, okay? And then uh, he'll have you step around to the back of the table, put the foot up, and he'll adjust the middle part of the arch very much like this, okay? And then he'll have you come back around and if the, if the big toe is uh, dropped, then we'll do this adjustment very much like this, okay? So how do you tell if your arches are dropped? Well, you can look and if they're, your foot is flat, obviously that's uh, an indicator. But uh, if it's hard to tell, uh, you can just have somebody poke kind of 
gently, but not too hard, uh, on the arch. And the places that feel tender, like this place near your heel will feel tender if this part is dropped, because the, the dropped part is poking out and causing inflammation, right? So, or this part will feel tender, or right here will feel tender, okay? And uh, as soon as we make these uh, reparations, as soon as we put everything back in place, the tenderness will go away pretty much, okay? So, uh, from there, when everything's back in place, then we have to strengthen it all. So, strengthening the foot uh, and the arch, uh, we do in uh, three or four stages. The first stage will be to uh, get you a pan, fill it up with rice, uh, and just kind of walk and scrunch your toes in the rice, okay? Uh, the second stage is a stage that I call towel gathering where we just put a towel on the floor in front of you and you just scrunch your toes up and gather the towel up under your feet. Okay? So it sounds easier than it actually is. Uh, so it may take a while to get the towel all the way under your feet. But as soon as you do, then just throw it out and start again, right? And uh, uh, one guy I know says, uh, Take a like a two liter Coke bottle and uh, fill it about three quarters away with water. Put it in the freezer, and you can set it beside you uh, when you're doing this exercise to uh, kind of put your feet on and roll it back and forth and cool them down uh, in between little repetitions of the towel gathering. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, third exercise is for the actual posterior tibialis muscle, which we're going to do uh, against a wall. So. Uh, it's going to start uh, with one hand on the wall, and the foot that's closest to the wall, he's going to put behind his knee, okay? So, come around closer. So he leans in, and then lets the uh, arch drop, and then he's going to pull the arch back straight, right? Come around to here so you can see that. And he's going to drop it again and pull it back straight. He's using this muscle line right here, which is the posterior tibialis, okay, and strengthening that over and over and over again. So he's just using his own body weight, leaning in and, and then pulling it back. Leaning in, pulling it back. Leaning in, pulling it back. So the last exercise, coming back to the center here, last exercise is uh, the most difficult and utilizes all of the muscles in the uh, arch all at once. I call this exercise foot shortening. So you want to stretch the foot out as far as it'll go and then pull the foot shorter. So uh, at first you might have to use your big toe, right? But eventually you want to not use the big toe and uh, just stretch with the big toe up. This will make sure that all the points in the arch are functioning in this exercise. Okay, so there's all of the uh, things that you need to repair your fallen arches. Uh, of course, this is not going to take three days. It may take six months or a year, depending on how severe your problem is. And you may need several trips to the bone setter or, or chiropractor uh, over a long period of time to make sure that uh, everything stays in place while you're doing all these exercises. So this is it. Uh, work on it. Uh, message me uh, with uh, any questions if you need to.